and welcome to another episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella. Today, I've got an amazing conversation lined up for you, and it's all about taking the initiative. Let's get into today's verse. Here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. That's Matthew chapter 7, verse 12a, the MSG version. I've got the amazing Jen here in studio with me. Hello. (laughs) Jen, one of the things about you that I love, you take the initiative. You very much are a person who walks into a room and you see what can be done and you do it. Oh, thank you for noticing that. I was like, who notices that? I really do. You know what? I do feel like people who take the initiative can often feel underappreciated because you're doing things before people are even noticing that there's a problem or a gap and you've already smoothed it over and no one really knows except for you. You saw the problem, you dealt with the problem and everyone's happy. But from me to you and to anyone else listening who's an initiative taker who solves problems even before people realize they are there, honor you, celebrate you, and thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I think most of us, when we go in a room, are like, okay, what needs to be done? What needs to be fixed? And what can make someone else's life yeah. easier? I, I I stand by that. Yeah. Well, who would we be without people who take initiative? Mm. (laughs) What are your first thoughts about this one? It's all about initiative. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, my first thought was uh, a saying that we probably heard in primary school when we were a lot younger. And it's the saying of treat others the way you want to be treated. And um, it's just, there's such an easy golden rule to follow. The word initiative, that just really stands out because it's telling you, you take the lead, you take that stance and you change it. Mm, Love it. I think for me, same thing. It gives me permission to just do something. Mm. Sometimes I really worry so much about making the wrong decision. I don't make a decision at all. And there was a podcast episode a couple of um, weeks ago called Decision Making Paralysis, which (laughs) unpacks this a little bit more. But I think this verse really says, hey, grab the initiative Mm. and do unto others as you would like done unto yourself. And it's such a powerful way to think. Mm. And like you said, it's a golden rule. (laughs) You can just take it with you into every situation and nine out of 10 times, it'll work out well. (laughs) Fingers crossed. Um, What What does this verse tell you about who God is or what matters to him? Yep. Well, I see that God values a go-getter with a very kind heart, like someone he thinks of others to show kindness and compassion. And it's just a great trait of a human being. Like this is what God really sees. And that's what he really, really sees in uh, us humans and really wants wants it for us. Mm, I love that. So good, Jen. I know that you've got a great story that you want to share around (laughs) someone taking the initiative. But before we get into that a little bit, could you share a bit about yourself for someone who's hearing you for the first time um, that you're, you know, who you are, mum, wife, all that sort of thing? <laughs> well, um, I'm a mum to a toddler named Chelsea. She is, oh, she's 19, 19 months. I'm trying to do the maths really quickly in my head. Real accountant, let's turn that on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, she's over a year, under two years. Yes, yes, we'll just go with that. She'll forever be like that, right? <laughs> um, so I am a wife to Kevin, who we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I am an ABC, which is Australian-born Chinese, um, and I'm an accountant as well, which, you know, you don't hear many accountants behind the mic, do you? No, but I'm loving this. This is great. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> so tell me about Kev, the story you've got about him taking taking the initiative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kev and I have been together about 14 years now and we've been married. Let me quickly look this up. It is. It changes every year. So I'm like, how many years have we been married? Like I can't keep up. Um, And we actually dated two years prior and we only dated for two months. Um, And that's the two months that we were trying to figure things out and Mm -hmm. we're supposed to be in a honeymoon period, but we never really were. Um, So we broke up and for some reason I was so stubborn in those two years Kev really wanted me back was always there and I kept saying no and no and no but now this is the big but there was something that turned it around and it was a car accident oh yeah right wow I did not see that coming (laughs) yeah I love the look on your face you're like what 
plot twist. Yeah, it really is. So just to pause there, you dated for two months mm-hmm. and then it didn't quite work out. Mm-hmm. And then for the two following years, Kev pursued you, mm-hmm. but you weren't really having a bar of it mm-hmm. until a car accident Correct. happened. Okay. What happened is <laughs> on the edge of my seat. <laughs> so on a holiday, I was driving in my car with my brother and I thought someone was behind me, like driving really closely. And I thought, you know, I'm going to pull over. This is a country side in Victoria as I pulled over I pulled over way too quickly my car skidded on the rocks and it smashed into a tree oh yeah huge it on one side of the car it didn't look damaged but on the other side of the car I had caused $15,000 damage to a $17,000 car now, to put on top of that, this wasn't my car. This was my dad's car. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is like drama on top of drama. <laughs> and you were with your brother. I was with my brother. Oh. So this is um, not with my autistic brother, but with my middle brother, Kelvin. Um, I don't even remember how old we were, but I remember being in shock. And the first words that came out of my mouth wasn't, oh, no, are you okay? It was, oh, my gosh, dad's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my first reaction. And... So for the rest of the holiday, I was just in pain. The pain, like the whiplash, the bruises, all that, and the body aches, all that added up to this big emotion of just anxiety or panic attacks. And I'll, Kev heard about this. So I told a couple of friends and he heard about this. Kev took that initiative. Now that's that word, that buzzword. He took the initiative. He took the time and he was messaging me every single day, making sure that one, I was okay. And two, to distract me from the car accident, from that incident. And so every single day, every morning, every night, he'll message me. He'll call me to see how I was going. When I came back from the trip, every single day he came over, every single day, he was like, let's do something and he just, he literally was there for me. And I asked him later on, like, what were your intentions? He goes, I just wanted to make sure you were okay. It, and he goes, I risked myself getting hurt. I knew, I had a thought that you might say, no, I don't want you anymore. I don't want you to be in my life at all. But I wanted to make sure that you were okay. So essentially, if Kev hadn't done what this verse said, which is basically doing to others what you would want them to do for you you might not be sitting here today married to him for eight years Mm -hmm. with an almost Mm two-year-old because all those years ago he chose to do the kind thing i think what i love about this is that he knew he could be rejected Mm -hmm. and yet he chose to still reach out because in his mind and in his heart it was the right thing to do like no other ulterior motive Mm -hmm. Correct. Isn't that cool? God broke down all these walls. Like he physically broke down these walls in a car accident. And then he mentally broke down those walls for me now. I think there's something incredibly powerful Mm -hmm. about an act of kindness Mm -hmm. without strings attached. Yeah. Easter wasn't too long ago and that's what it was all about. It was this sacrifice. It was love being shown through action for us Mm -hmm without any strings attached. And I think when Jesus demonstrated that on the cross for us and he gives us scriptures like this to live our lives by, Jesus said, that's how the verse starts, you know, it's not just um, one of the Bible authors. Jesus said, here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for Mm -hmm. them. And I think when we do that, we can break down walls that tough conversations Mm. and TED talks (laughs) and lifestyle changes can't break down. But there's something really powerful about an act of kindness. Mm. Yeah, it's so, so true. Um, All Kev had to do was just take charge. He just had to take charge of that situation with the mindset of kindness, with the mindset of love. As we wrap up today's episode, I'd love to ask you one question for today's application. Where can you take initiative? Matthew 7, 12 says, here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. 
So who's that person who's getting under your skin? Is it your child? Is it your partner? Is this person uh, involved with your workplace or one of your hobbies? Maybe this is the person who you just don't like sitting next to on public transport. <laughs> I'm not sure who it is for you. But who's that person who just gets under your skin and you find yourself saying, if only they would just dot, dot, dot. Now, if you've got a person who's just come to mind right now, grab that thought, don't let it go anywhere. Take it to God in prayer today and ask God to help you take the initiative. Well, that wraps up today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I do want to mention that this episode might have been hard for you to hear if you're a single person and you're waiting for God to make a way in that area. And it can be a little bit hard to hear another story of a relationship working out and happily ever after. So I'd encourage you to go and check out episode number three titled Single and Waiting because I know that will truly bless your heart. Before I sign off, I'd love to remind you that if you want to send through an email and let me know what you're enjoying about the podcast, the email is in the link below. Catch up tomorrow.